Hot buses started in the back of Candy's car. We had pieces that we'd post on social media, Facebook and Instagram, and people would call, and we'd run with our stuff. I guess that's how our brand started. I came across Linda's work. She was doing a lot of uh, jewelry and accessories bags. I contacted her. I was thinking at that time of maybe uh, having a collaboration with her on the collection because I was doing uh, clothing and um, thought maybe we should start a brand together because we shared the same vision and working together would make, would make sense. So February 2014, we launched with Basso. I think that the Rwandan aesthetic is an aesthetic that is kind of timeless and, and that looks contemporary. It's, it's, it's a lot of geometrical shapes, a lot of black and white. So that's kind of universal. And yet it's, it's, very, it's very traditional. Well, I know that we are made in Rwanda brand. That's what I think represents our business best. But we're globally appreciated. So it can appeal to anyone. You don't have to be African to want to wear what we have or to buy a home decor piece. Just appreciate fairly made, high quality goods. When you enter Basso, you find clothing a lot, and also accessories, bags, jewelry, interior deco pieces. As we say, we work with, uh, with artisans a lot, and we try to really mix traditional uh, and contemporary. We're really trying to be different, but offering something good and always good quality. I think one of the one and specific program that we have is uh, we don't produce any fabric. So that's an issue for us as designers is that we, we cannot find good quality products. So we have to import, which is an extra cost. Right now we're traveling a lot to source a lot of these things, but it would be nice and cheaper to have it locally available and also in a big amount in case we got bigger orders. I think that's a challenge for a lot of African countries. I don't think it's just specific to Rwanda. So you do beadwork with a cooperative of 14 women. Mm -hmm. They do the Bianzi, which is traditionally our milk jug, and it's beaded for special occasions. So the wooden part is made by a different cooperative, and then it's beaded by women. Cow dung art is a mixture of ash and cow dung, and they sculpt it. So we kind of played with that idea and made jewelry boxes and did uh, picture frames, and we're trying to find ways to merge these cultural skill sets to make more functional goods. We didn't start with any money. So had we started with a big amount of money, I don't think we'd be where we are today. It forces you to learn and be more uh, conscious about your decisions. So I normally say to people that ask me, I'm like, don't think because you don't have the finances, it can't work. You can start with an Instagram page. You can start with a Facebook page until you get, and I feel like it's made us stronger. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, probably also because our products uh, are good and we really try to get better and better and so the products took for, for themselves. We always have to be innovating, always. Like you post on Instagram next three days it's someone else is posting the same exact thing, maybe they change the color of one part. So instead of getting mad about it, we just thought that we just work harder and keep always pushing our stuff and I think that's what people enjoy about coming is they always come back and find something new. So it's kind of become a positive for us as well. And also we make sure that we post our things on Instagram so that people see who copies who. <laughs> <laughs>